Are these the soldiers closing in on the scouts? Is it the- it's the military police, the kids. Long time to see. Marlo, yeah, yeah. Hitch. This guy's a thinker. He's the one who wants to make things better for the military police, right? Yeah. They probably have, have no idea about any of this. Speaking of the scouts, they heard them coming. From a mile away. Are they gonna end up with the scouts? That would be interesting. I mean, I know they have a role to play. Because they were they were introduced. Hey. <laughs> it's time to open my heart to the truth. <laughs> Aw, man, that Erwin shot means so much more to me now after the last episode. It's weird. That whole scene, I always admired Erwin deeply. But now I like admire him and feel for him. He was just a kid once, you know? There's an innocence to the story that he told. What did he do wrong? He just asked questions. You know, his crime was being sharp and intelligent and curious, and he lost his father for it. And he's so good that he managed to turn that into something productive for humanity at his own expense, you know? Like, the more I think about it, the more touched I feel by it. Trust! That's a tough one. <laughs> You're asking a lot, Attack on Titan, after all you've given me. Speak of the devil. Or the angel. You think Erwin would ever crack under an interrogation? Don't ask too many questions around here. No corruption here. Yeah, yeah. Who developed it, is my question. Yeah, that was my- that was my- my guess. <laughs> Just like Batman. This guy's a big witness. He can set the whole thing straight. Yeah. Yeah, he's the only one, really. Yeah, if you're doomed anyway, you might as well. Yeah, but both can be true. <laughs> That's so true. They have nothing to lose. The respect. Unfazed. I don't know about Mikasa. I'm sort of impressed by the fact that she would speak to Levi that way. I remember when they first introduced her, she was sort of a joke to the other military cadets. I think they were implying that she didn't deserve to be there, that she did some questionable things, maybe. But Levi is a famous and terrifying figure, so for her to stand up to him like that, she's got something. And even though she's furious and hateful at the moment, I feel like that's just a hair away from being on their side, because it shows that she's principled, and if she learns the truth, very good chance that that outrage is flipped around at the enemies of the scouts. So somehow it seems like the scouts are ending up with two very principled Military police members. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It's pretty shocking. It took me a while too. <laughs> he was fast. That was way faster than I thought. He's ready. He was always ready. Yeah, he's sort of he's something else, but respect. <laughs> Yeah, one does not just simply walk into the scouts. Is he gonna let them go? <laughs> no, no. That's not John John. Trust. Trust. <laughs> 
Was he actually gonna do it? <laughs> that backfired. Poor John John. Was the trip planned? <laughs> right, and he said the same thing about him. Jin John is low-key one of the most introspective characters. I feel like he's working really hard to try to figure out his own worldview. It feels like he's constantly testing out new things. And so I guess he admires people who have conviction or show conviction or show strength towards towards their beliefs. If it were me to the extent that I connect with John John, I admire people who have things I feel I lack. And while I don't think he realizes how far ahead of others he is just because he's asking these questions, he might feel confused and conflicted about himself and who he is. So people like Levi and Irwin, first of all, and Aaron are going to be really intriguing to him, but then Marlo as well. And Hitch, surprisingly. Hitch turning out to be the, the strong, <laughs> strong principled character no one, no one thought she was, or I didn't think she was. Hitch maybe even more so than Marlo. She just let it all come out in the meeting with Levi. No fear. And now, they have people who can act as insiders. Look how quickly they converted them. They were just ready to be converted. It's turning into a civil war. A bold plan right through the front gate. That's how the scouts do it. I wonder if fighting humans feels easier. Like it's definitely darker, right? It's it's sadder, but they're so hardened. They're like hardened battle veterans. They're just taking out one one outpost at a time. Chancellery, an institution which unifies and supervises various public organizations. Although it officially outranks other organizations, its authority is under constant contention. Interesting. That's a trap. You're all dead. Are people listening to this? There you go. Showing some spine. Nice. Damn, she's got quite the punch. Yeah, there were people listening. Hanji really used that guy well. Hanji just started a revolution single-handedly. It's amazing. Wow. The Reeves company really turning around. Who would have thought that the son... The son would become, like, a hero in his way. Man, this is what being in the scouts does to you. It just makes you so <laughs> unstoppable. They're like turning the whole thing around. They're going to take down the whole thing. Death is not a threat. Admittedly, that's tough. But Erwin would willingly die. Exactly. They're all prepared for death at this point. Wait, what? Oh yeah, so I forgot. I missed that. I missed the uh, Levi Ackerman reveal. So he and Mikasa are related, and Kenny also is related. The Ackermans are quite the quite the group, quite the family. Yeah, it's a long uphill battle, but at this rate, they'll just recruit them, and that'll be that. Man, it hurts me to see Erwin like this. The one handcuff on his remaining arm. What could it be? What did he entrust to Pixis? He just didn't share. So there are multiple factions even from within. Oh no! If Erwin dies here, I'm quitting the show forever. Erwin cannot die here. There's just too much left for him to do. I need him. <laughs> He's too good a character to die at the hands of these chumps. He's planted a bunch of seeds. Like, this is Erwin. He planted a scene with Niall. 
Niles. He planted a seed with Pixis, and we've seen in the past that he's good at getting leverage on people. You know, he's above the game, but he's also a great player of the game. Like, he understands it really well. And knowing Erwin and seeing what I've seen from him, very little of this is a surprise to him. I mean, I feel like he probably counted on this as an inevitability that they would turn on him, that they would see him as a threat. And so he must have hedged himself. That being said, I know he's prepared to die. I know that his life is not really a big part of, of his goal. Seems like he accepted that a long time ago. And rightly so, you know, how could the scouts follow him otherwise? Then you have this theme of shaping image and control of the population through information. And I guess they do that through multiple fronts. One is just threat of violence to people who share information, controlling the media or whatever this is, creating an external threat of the Titans, and I guess now an external threat that's inside the walls of the scouts, and then also making a display of giving. Like we saw in the beginning of the season, the king granted his extra resources or whatever, right? Which of course he gets from the, the people. In real life, I feel like it might be very difficult to sway people. Like. Even if they knew, you know, I feel like all people are aware on some level of, of deception going on. And it's just a matter of, is it worth it to them to do anything about it or to care about it? Especially in a culture like this one, where I feel like there's an attitude of me first, my survival first. As long as people are content and have a life, I'm not really sure how effective Hanji's going to be able to reach them. That's why the people with ideals in the show are so exceptional. You know, like, like Marlo, everyone mocked him for, you know, wanting to make a change. It's just, no, this is our life, we play cards or whatever. Don't kick the hornet's nest, right? Because it's going to destroy all of us. So it's an uphill battle, and I can't help but feel like, to a large extent, it will come down to force. Even if Erwin has some some aces up his sleeve with Pixis, whatever that means. And Levi and crew are not even able to, to really make an impact yet, because they're, they're just fighting for survival. So it's all very tense, and I feel like it escalated so quickly. My feeling so far this season is that I had the rug pulled out from under me. So many things have changed. I mean, this is barely even about Titans right now. This is about, like... The government. I remember a long time I, I made a joke. I think it was when Aaron had the court courtroom trial. And I said, oh, I guess this is the bureaucracy arc. And there were a lot of comments saying, right, this is the bureaucracy arc. Just wait. And here we are. This is the government intrigue, the political intrigue and scheming, plotting, treating everyone as a bird in a cage, secret motives. So that's the end of episode four. I'll see you next time when we resolve this horrible Irwin cliffhanger, which made me really angry. <laughs> Maybe after a couple flashbacks.